So we're going to go ahead and we're going to deploy the vCenter Server Appliance 6.5. You're going to download the ISO file for that. It's about three to four gigs, if I remember correctly, in size. Then what you're going to do is you're going to attach that ISO file so that you can unpack it and you can see the contents of it, like I've done here in Windows Explorer. And then you're going to see this folder here, vcsa-ui-installer. You're going to go ahead and click on that. Even though you might be on a 64-bit system, it uh, doesn't matter. Just go to the Win32 folder here. And then you're going to see the installer exe file here. And this is what we're going to click on. And, you know, since the 6.x versions of deploying vCenter Server Appliance, how we deploy it is a little bit different. We go about it this way rather than deploying it the way we used to with the older versions. So we're going to launch this little application. We're going to point to a uh, ESXi host or vSphere host that we want to deploy the appliance to and it'll go ahead and do that for us. So let's get started and we're going to go ahead and double click on this. So I've double clicked on the installer file and it brings up this particular pop-up window here. Now with the vCenter server appliance installer as you see we have several options here. Install, upgrade, migrate and restore. Now the install portion is pretty much the same as it was with uh, vSphere 6.0, 6.2 with some additional selections that you will make because the vCenter server appliance in version 6.5 does have some new features such as high availability built into it. And uh, as you see at the bottom there, the fourth one, it now has also the ability to do backup and restore of the vCenter server appliance. And it has that ability built right into the appliance. So you're no longer having to use vSphere data protection to do the backup, which sometimes didn't had some issues with backing up a vCenter server. Uh, now it's built into the vCenter server, so you can back up and then uh, once you have a backup image and you do a restore, this is where you're going to do it. You're going to relaunch this pop-up here, clicking on the installer, and then you would click the restore to restore the vCenter server appliance. So much quicker and easier to restore a vCenter server appliance in 6.5. Another new feature too is the migrate utility, vCenter server 6.5 uh, for the appliance version and only in the appliance version. Um, you are able to migrate from previous versions such as 5.5 and 6.0 from both the Windows and the vCenter server appliance versions to migrate to 6.5. And this will help you migrate and bring over all of your metrics, all the information so you're not losing anything, including the, the vCenter ID as well. And then, of course, if you're just looking to do an upgrade down the road as new versions of vCenter come out and vSphere, you can simply uh, say if uh, version 7 comes out, you download the ISO, connect to it, and then you do the upgrade through here. So as you see, those are your options. Now, since this is just a test environment and I'm going to treat this like a new install, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the install function. This is just an initial screen here with some basic information, nothing really useful here. Then, of course, we have the EULA agreement, which we need to accept, and click Next. Now, here is an important decision that you want to make. Now, for myself, in this particular instance, being that this is just a, a demo environment and test environment, I'm going to select the pre-selected uh, option for using the Embedded Platform Services Controller. Now, if you're actually deploying this in a true production environment, VMware and including myself highly recommend that you choose to do an external platform services controller because you never know when your environment may grow down the road and you may have a need to run more than one vCenter server. And if your environment grows too much and you're using embedded uh, platform services controller, they, you know, doing the platform services controller functions along with the normal vCenter, it may tend to overload your vCenter server if you've got a lot of objects in a very large um, vCenter environment. So to kind of protect yourself both from a quicker restore and backup option, as well as um, just being able to grow your environment, say if your company uh, acquires another company and you want to fold them into your vCenter environment. Um, 
it is highly recommended that you use the external platform services controller. So keep that in mind. Again, for uh, test dev type environments, using the embedded is fine. You can use the embedded in a production environment. Just keep in mind to think ahead as to, is there any chance of you being able to grow your environment uh, significantly to where your vCenter server would become a little bit bogged down because of the database and everything Thing that is associated to that platform service controller and its function. So just a little word to the wise there. Click next. Now what we're going to do is we're going to point to the particular vSphere host that we want to deploy it on. So I'm going to put that IP information in there. I'm going to keep the port at 443. And then for a host, typically login is root. And then whatever your password that you set when you deployed your host. I'm going to click next. And when that happens, it's going to give you this pop up for the certificate warning. Of course, you need to accept this certificate so the communication can happen. And once we do that, it brings you to the next screen here. I'm just going to uh, call my vCenter server appliance vCenter. Uh, vCenter. And then we're going to set the password. Now, just to bring the light here, the password for this it does have higher requirements than it used to, at least eight, but a maximum of 20 characters. And it must have an uppercase, lowercase, a number, and a special character, one of the options here. So keep that in mind um, when you're creating your password. So I'm going to go ahead and set my password here, making sure that we're meeting the requirements. I'm going to click Next. Now here we're going to select the deployment size. Now what this is going to do is it's going to select the VMDK sizes that it will create as well as the size of the database. Now again being a test dev environment I'm just going to stick to the tiny environment but you do obviously have these other selections and then as you go up in them obviously the uh, VMDK sizes as well as the data store size will increase. You also have a storage size here. I'm just going to go with the default, but you can do large and extra large. Now, there's a little information here. Again, just tells you, uh, depending on the size of your environments, how much stats you're going to be collecting, as to what size you might want to collect. Now, here's a little chart to give you an idea of what's going to be deployed when you select that particular deployment size. So being that I selected the tiny, it's going to deploy it with two virtual CPUs, 10 gig of memory, 250 gigs of storage. It can handle up to 10 ESX hosts and up to 100 VMs. So here we're going to select where we're going to place the vCenter server appliance on what data store. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select data store one here and I'm going to enable thin disk mode because again, this is a test demo environment. Uh, I want to use the least amount of space that I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That way it doesn't provision and tie up the whole amount of space on that data store right away. I'm going to click next. So here on this screen, we're going to go ahead and fill out all the networking information. I went ahead and filled that out. Uh, we only have the default VM network here because, again, this is a fresh network. I've selected uh, by default IP version 4. You can do 6 if you need to. Uh, you can also set it either static or dynamic. I highly recommend that you set a static IP for the vCenter server. I do not recommend doing DHCP. Um, and then I went ahead and I uh, put in the system name. Now you can do either IP or FQDN. If you use the IP, that's what you're going to need to connect to rather than the FQDN for the certificate, just to let you know. But just for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use the IP. Set the IP, the subnet, default gateway, and DNS server for that. Click Next. And here, this is just a summary of all the settings. and we'll go ahead and click finish. So as you see, um, getting the vCenter server appliance initially deployed is pretty simple. Uh, some of the other feature sets as far as high availability and stuff like that will be uh, configured on the appliance uh, later. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and get the vCenter server appliance deployed and up and running. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause this. So while it's deploying, you don't have to wait. Now, one thing I'd like to mention here 
the install you're going to notice is going to be a little bit quicker than previous versions of the install. Now, one reason for that is because with the vCenter Server Appliance 6.5, we actually have built that based on our Photon OS. It's no longer the SUSE based operating system, which means that the Photon OS is a little bit smaller. It runs more efficiently for our needs for vCenter. So we're seeing uh, up to like a three times uh, better performance from it, as well as we're also not um, dependent on the SUSE um, operating system patches. So you should see that there's going to be less security uh, patches than you used to see for the vCenter server appliance that was built off of SUSE. So with this Photon OS, you're going to see a lot less updates that are going to need to be done. And again, you're going to see some additional performance gains from it. And because we went to the Photon OS was why we were able to also embed the high availability, the backup and restore, and some of those newer features that are specific to the vCenter server appliance in version 6.5. So here we're doing some last configurations in the install. We're just about done at 99%. And there we go. So it reached 100%. It gave us the green check mark saying that we successfully deployed the vCenter server with the embedded PSC and that the deployment was complete. We want to make sure that we do get that message. If you get anything other than that, you're going to want to redeploy the vCenter server because there was an issue. So we're going to go ahead and click continue. Now, at this point, that was stage one, okay? That deploys the primary vCenter server appliance for you. But now getting into some of the more advanced type feature sets uh, and configurations such as the uh, SSO configuration, this is in the step two. Now, at this point in time, what we highly recommend is that you go in and you take a snapshot of the vCenter server at this point once you've completed stage one and before you start stage two. That way, if you have any issues with stage two, you can go back and do a restore to the end of stage one point and start again from there. So that is one feature that they did also build into the new vCenter server appliance 6.5, the ability to where it kind of separates these install stages to where you can do a snapshot. So you're not having to go back to the beginning to redeploy the vCenter server from the start. Okay, so I went ahead and I took a snapshot of the VM since we finished stage one, and we're gonna go ahead and move on to stage two. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. And then here, um, we're gonna set up the uh, time now, you can either sync with the host, or if it's in a production environment and you have a time server, you can go off that, whether it's off your domain controllers, uh, either or. I'm just going to do it and set it off the host. And uh, SSH access, you can either leave it disabled uh, for security reasons, or you can enable it. I'm going to go ahead and enable it so I have access to it. It is only a test environment after all. I'm going to click Next. Now, the SSO domain. Now, typically, when I set up the SSO domain, although you have your option of what you're going to call it, I usually like to call it just the standard vSphere.local and do that first. Then the standard username for the administrator is administrator. And, of course, you have to set your password. And then your site name. And for the site name, I'm just going to call it vSphere just for simplicity's sake. And click Next. And then you can, of course, join the Customer Experience Improvement Program. I'm going to not do that. Click Next. And then here's just a summary again of all your options. And click Finish. Now, it does give you the warning here letting you know you not be able to pause or stop the install from completing once you've started this. So you can click OK or you can click Cancel to stop the install. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And now it's going to go ahead and finalize the stage two configurations of the appliance. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this so you don't have to wait for it. Okay, so as you see here, we've completed stage two. And again, we get the green check mark saying that we've successfully deployed and set up the appliance. And then it also gives you the uh, vSphere web client 
address, which is the first link here, and then also the appliance getting started page, which is basically just if you go to the IP address of the vCenter server, it gives you that basic page. And click close, and that completes the deployment of the vCenter server appliance 6.5.